Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of WoW Weekly with Mist. For this week's events, we have Trial of Style that will start on Tuesday, and it's going to run all the way till Saturday. I have two videos on Trial of Style, so if you're not sure what that really is, it's basically one big fashion show, like a transmog contest. And I do have an edited video that I will post at the end of this video. I'll put a link to it. And I also have a stream if you'd rather see something that doesn't have edited cuts in it. It's pretty fun. You just go in, a theme will be presented to you, and you go through your transmog list, and you have a very small window of time that you got quickly put together an outfit. Uh, and then all of you guys go up on the stage and other people vote for the best costume. Also, we'll have the PvP brawl. It's gonna be War Song Scramble. Uh, time walking is this week. It's gonna be the Wrath of the Lich King. This right here is the vendor mount from the Lich King time walking event. It costs 5,000 tokens so you can buy this one also there's of course the infinite time raver which i am still going after so i can't physically hop on the mount for you but this is it in the collection and that is what's gonna be the mount run streams tomorrow so i'm gonna send an alt in there and uh, try to get infinite time raver. All my friends that have that literally are friends that have never been seriously into WoW. It's crazy. It's like, I, I'm the 17 year WoW player and it, it takes like a casual just walking in, loot the infinite and walk out, you know? It makes me so sad. And the last event for the week will be, of course, Dark Moon. So on Sunday, Dark Moon will start. So uh, it'll it'll be, um, you know, obviously I'll be mentioning it again next week because it'll more or less run into next week. But you can start it on Sunday. And that is the events. As for accomplishments, you're looking at it right now. I took advantage of the power level on this past Thursday. Uh, for those that don't know, the garrison, when it coincides with the pet battle weekly, it equals a nice power level. Uh, pretty much two fights in each pet's leveled to max when you start from one, so it's really nice to do. I will definitely let you know when it comes back around. This is the last severe power level uh, for the year, we're not going to see another one till 2022. Uh, but they do occasionally, more or less on a monthly basis, have this team back in the garrison. It just won't be on a week that the pet battles are. So you could still level decently, but not as fast as you could when the pet battles the weekly. But like I said, I'll let you know. And that's of course for NA. Uh, EU has one coming up, I th think in November or something. I'd have to look at my video, but if you ever want to know uh, the video, that I guess I'll throw a link into the description in case you guys are curious. But that video, I constantly update it with dates. So if you're ever wondering when the next one is, just go to that video and it'll be updated and I do update it for NA and EU. So back to the accomplishment. So my accomplishment was that for those that don't know, which may be a lot of you because it's not too often that I open up my pet tab, but uh, I think the only people that would know this would be stream people. But I constantly add to a list. I've made a list for the past years called the leveling pet list and I keep adding pets. A lot of them are pets I need for family familiar. 
Uh, some have been for dungeon pets. For a while it was celestial. I've since, you know, done a video up on that and we're good there. But I've always had a list of pets to um, level. And over time I've been getting down to that list and I almost knocked it out the last big pet leveling event. So this one knocked it out. I leveled every remaining pet that was considered mandatory for me. Of course, I will keep doing the pet battles. <laughs> you know, I, I've, if I had my own way, every single pet in my list would be a level 25, right? So it, leveling pets will probably never end, but my mandatory list that involved pets that I've been holding off achievements or tasks because they're not leveled, that is all done. So that was a huge accomplishment for me. I was really happy to get that done. And uh, since then, <laughs> after, you know, after I took this screenshot of the list pretty much empty, I went and added some new ones. Uh, the, the new list is at the moment, just pets that I would just like leveled. They're not needed for anything, and yeah. And yeah, so that was a nice accomplishment. But yeah, the pet leveling was the only accomplishment, really. I didn't have goals for this week, but we do have goals for this reset coming up. So, the mount runs, like I said, they are gonna be the time walking. I'm. I'm probably, you'll probably only see my mage on Tuesday uh, because she's really close to 60 and when it comes to the infinite time reaver farm, I like to use, you know, I'm, as you guys have probably noticed, I'm a person that likes to knock out more than one thing at the same time. And so now, now uh, it's been a while since I've had all the mounts purchased on my main and um, my main doesn't really need the gear so like the gear from the quest so it's the alts I use it to level uh, last time the time walking was around it was actually pretty good leveling uh, it, it wasn't as good as when the bug was kind of in the picture. There was a bug the last time that like made leveling severely good and then they fixed it. Uh, but it's still decent. Uh, I was averaging like a level per dungeon, so it's really not that bad. And if you still need the infinite time reaver, like, you're taking a bit of a cut on the leveling, but you're mount farming at the same time. So you're, I feel like it's worth it because you want to go after the infinite anyway. So yeah, so that is goal number one. And goal number two is going to get done while farming the infinite because like I said, I also am close to level 60 on the mage. And while I farm that, I should be able to get her to 60. And that's basically all I really want to get done as far as goals go for this week. So with that said, let's get to news. There's been a lot of news this week. Let's talk 9.1.5. So in last WoW Weekly, I made a prediction of what I thought would be showing up. And honestly, pretty much a few days after making that prediction video they legit announced a lot of those things um there's still some things on there that haven't been announced like the brawlers guild uh, but a lot of them have uh we more or less started the week with finding out that we're getting character customizations or new character customizations which was kind of a shocker since they told us straight out we weren't getting any for this um, expansion. So here's some pictures showing off some of the uh, customizations. So we got Draenei here and we have some Nightborn and some Void Elves. 
Also, we learned that the Covenant is getting some updates. One big one is that uh, players who have max renown, I feel that this is important to stress because a lot of people have just been saying, oh, you're going to be able to swap your Covenants around, you know, 9.1.5. But it's important to remember that you have to be max renown to do it. So... If you're max renown for the covenant that you're in, you will be able to freely swap among all four covenants without any restrictions. So you'll be able to get cosmetics and like pets and mounts and transmogs and all that. The switching of the covenant and the use of the rewards will also apply to your alts once the renown threshold is reached on one character. My thoughts on this one is too little too late in my personal opinion. A lot of these changes are too little too late to be honest because uh, like for example um, skipping the maw is another one that uh, they have added and you know I've already dragged all my alts through the mob because it was taken so long for them to put that in there and so now i don't even need to i don't even need a moss skip anymore i got impatient and you know like i wanted to level those characters you know i didn't want to be behind just because i'm waiting for a moss skip so i don't even need that function anymore and as far as this swapping covenants uh, yeah, I'm not doing that. I don't care about that change. I know a lot of people do care. And kudos to you. But me? I've already positioned my alts at the different covenants. They're already working on anima and have been. You know, and honestly, my main can't benefit off of a lot of the stuff you would gain the anima for. So... I prefer to actually do it on my alts because, you know, I'll do a world quest for anima. It'll give me gear that my alt actually can use because they're low item level. Whereas my main is just, you know, benefits nothing other than actually getting the anima. And like I've said many times, I like to make things worth it. And it just, it's worth it, right? So I don't really care about this change, but I know I know some people are happy for this change, you know, but I am going to continue to farm those different covenant items on the characters that I have at those covenants. I only do it on four, like it's not like I got two Maldraxxus doing the same shit. I, I do have multiple Maldraxxus characters, but only one farms anima the the rest they're they're just there you know they just use the ability so there is that also conduit energy is being removed and the conduits will be freely swappable without restrictions as well completing the covenant campaign on one character allows the alts to be able to skip that same covenants campaign I like that one because as someone who has a lot of fucking alts and is, you know, I not only have a lot of alts, but I'm one of those rare players that actually plays my alts. You know, I'm not just a person that has alts that, you know, only mount farms or whatever. I legit play them. So I do like that you can skip that so I can actually play those alts. So these are good changes, just it took so fucking long. Also another one that I had predicted that they've decided to add in is Legion Time Walking. So with the patch they will implement Legion Time Walking. This will also include access to the Mythic Plus dungeons. I, I had never really thought about the fact before that Legion Time Walking brings a whole new level to Time Walking because that's when Mythic Plus was implemented and I wasn't even really thinking of Mythic Plus in that picture. 
when it has its first run through after being implemented, it's going to actually run for two weeks. It won't run the normal schedule, but then after that, it'll be like the normal schedule is just a weekly. But the first time we see Legion time walking, it will be a two week cycle. Now, this one has me curious too, because while I was pretty sure they would add this, I wonder what's gonna go on now, because we are so far into the time walking now that in my personal opinion anyway, Legion was the last good expansion. BFA and Shadowlands sucks the big one. Uh, I have thought that since pretty much before BFA even launched. Uh, playing the Alpha, I thought it was garbage. You know, and I was pretty sure they wouldn't fix it. So, that makes me wonder. Are they just gonna start doing some bad time walking ones? Like... That is definitely down the road, that would be at least a couple of years, they, they put a new one every expansion, which is why I could so easily predict Legion time walking. It wasn't too far-fetched to predict that because this is the time frame that they usually add a new time walking into the picture, so, so yeah, but I would be interested in seeing if it ends with Legion time walking. I think it should. I think this should be the last time walking we see. I like the time walking, but who wants to go do BFA content through a time walking event, right? Islands. That one was another one that I predicted we would get, and they did announce that you'll be able to solo queue or with a party so yeah that'll be interesting i'm still gonna have to queue with a party because i still need a couple pvp achievements i can't imagine there's any way to solo that shit so like it's as far as the mythic ones go i i, I did all that shit in bfa i really just need those pvp ones Honestly, I'm still kind of kicking myself in the ass for not finishing the PvP ones in BFA because I did start them and I put a pretty good dent into them. But then it was like near end expansion. I was so burnt out on fucking doing a shit ton of islands and more fronts and this and that. And yeah, so I, yeah. And. I do usually try to do all the content in current because this is what happens, right? The um, Blizzard, Blizzard has a way of doing things. You might think all these changes are great, but they were thinking of doing these changes anyway. Some people think they've made all these changes because of people leaving. It has nothing to do with that. Maybe a small amount might have something to do with it, but this is the cycle. This is what they do every expansion. They start the expansion with hype, remove everything that you love, more or less, and then you complain and they ignore you, and then, you know, once we're a little over halfway of the expansion, they start bringing out systems that allow faster farming and then right near the end they make shit super easy to where you can get things fast it's the way they do it i am not at all surprised that these changes went through and i don't at all think it has to do with the shit going on i think they had it scheduled in like they have every other expansion. They're not really running this expansion any different than they ran other ones. You know, like it's all the same time frame. The only difference is that now we've had two bad expansions in a row and people have been dealing with them doing this kind of system for a lot of years. You know, honestly, I really think it's the two bad expansions in a row that did it. Because I mentioned back in BFA when I had my rant that most people are having now. I, I had mine where I was super mad. I was ready to quit. 
And I mentioned in that video that if they do two bad expansions in a row, a lot of people are gonna leave and that will be kind of the ruin of WoW. Like, don't get me wrong, WoW's gonna always have a ton of players, but they will have a lot less, right? And that's exactly what happened. Two bad expansions, a huge amount of people playing different games, whether it be another MMO or just other random stuff. Players just got fed up at that point. The thing is, like, the the reason, you know, we had players for Legion after WAD not being great is because one bad expansion and then a good expansion is fine. People will sit through one bad expansion and then hope for the best for the next one. Uh, unfortunately, I, you know, reversed my quit and I hoped that for Shadowlands. I was giving it the benefit of the doubt, even though I already had my doubts on it. And the thing is, as bad as that is to have a bad expansion and then a good one, you should never have a bad expansion. But players will deal with that. What players won't deal with is two bad expansions in a row, because that's four years of bad content versus two years of bad content and then two years of actually having fun. Now back on the topic of changes, because I kind of sidetracked a little bit there. Now are they good changes? Of course they are. Will they save WoW? I don't know. I personally, no. I don't think they will and honestly I've said it before and I'll say it again. The biggest mistake they ever did was making this expansion so bad that people actually looked at another game. The fact that people have seen what's out there now, yeah. In a game like WoW, you don't want people looking elsewhere, right? The minute they look elsewhere, they realize they have options. <laughs> and, and now, the WoW community will never be the same ever again. You, you have to wipe the slate clean. You pretty much have to destroy WoW completely and bring out a whole new game because people will never dedicate the time they have in the past to WoW. You know, especially Final Fantasy players because now they know that there's another good MMO out there and even if WoW does get their shit together and becomes good again, nothing's stopping those players from playing both. And yes, you can play two MMOs, but you can't excel in two MMOs. They have also mentioned that we will be able to take advantage of additional fast travel points from Venari's Refuge to Perdition Hold and Desmeteron, I don't know if I said that right, within the Maw by unlocking access to them. So we'll see what the requirements are for unlocking. Uh, Anima, what they're doing is when you complete quests with Archivist uh, Rosier, who's out in Corthia. He's your, um, he's your archivist rep. Uh, he will provide access to an anima diverter in Corthia where you can just deposit your anima right, right at it. Another one that was mentioned was transmog linking. Uh, this one is basically you show off your transmog to chat or online by sharing a link from the dressing room. And then players can just mouse over the items, see how you collected them, which boss or whatever. And they can also see if they've already collected it. Honestly, I feel like we almost have this, you know? I guess it's because I use an add-on, but this straight out as an add-on that I use because I pretty much can already do that but it'll be in the system so you wouldn't need the add-on I guess. Uh, another cool thing that they mentioned is the drop rate for the rune carving recipes. They are 
increasing that to a hundred percent drop rate in any dungeon difficulty so that's a pretty big one uh legacy loot rules have been applied to the bfa dungeons now another thing they are talking about is that they are considering allowing us to transfer anima to alts and removing the anima cap I think that would be great. You know, the removing anima cap for sure and the transfer anima to alt, so why not? We have the other transfer for the uh, Torghast, right? Wouldn't take much and you collect a lot of anima. It takes nothing to do the weekly. You can do the weekly in like an hour, if that. I would love to see that and I do hope that actually happens and semi soon as for the 9.1.5 ptr that is gonna occur this week sometime okay and for the last piece of news i have for you guys this week has to do with classic so in last week's wow weekly i mentioned that there was rumors of a potential fresh classic and uh, this past week they confirmed that they are indeed working on a fresh classic and for you guys that are still playing um, BC there is some major content updates coming up uh, Overlords of Outlands is gonna go live soon and I'm sure in upcoming months we will hear more on classic fresh they do say it's coming soon, but I, I don't know if, it, if soon is as soon as you may think. Uh, this weekend I've decided to add a bonus stream in, so I'm going to be streaming on Friday, but I'm also going to be on stream on Saturday, so if you want to come hang out with me for the weekend, uh, I will be on both days. Um, not Sunday, because Sunday is pretty much... Unless something special is going on, it's pretty much always a no because Sunday's the day I do these WoW weeklies. They take the longest to edit out of all my videos, so... But definitely stop by the stream this weekend and we'll chill out. I'll also be, you know, on stream tomorrow for Mount Lawrence. And, uh, and yeah. So that calls it on this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know what you guys are up to. Are you playing WoW? Are you playing a different game? Are you looking forward to the 9.1.5 changes? Are you looking forward to Fresh Classic? And we'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.